So guys, today I'm going to be talking, or doing a very interesting series called The Mora Garbrook vs. The World. And what I mean by this is, I'm going to be putting up there are this more awesome Mora Garbrook up against many different knives. Especially all the knives I have. Especially some of these higher end knives. Because something about the Mora Garbrook, when I first got it and through my use with it, is it's really impressed me as a extremely capable but very affordable bushcrafting knife. And ultimately, I'm going to be testing through this series of tests uh, just how good is this knife versus things like this Bark River Bushcrafter versus things like the Pull Force Prepper One. Knives that I really like but are quite expensive. Whereas this, you could buy you could buy at least four of these for the price of this, just one of these. So you know, that is just how good a deal this knife is. So, like I said, this is going to be a series. I'm not sure how long it's going to be, but pretty much it's going to be me testing the Mora Garberg in particular directly against a competitor. So this case, or for this first test, it's going to be the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. This is one of my, as I've mentioned many times before, one of my most favorite knives ever. You know, this knife is a legendary knife for me. It is just such a good bushcraft, campcraft kind of knife, and I really want to see just how well this Mora Garberg does against it. So also keep in mind, these are all going to be my personal opinions. I'm not paid to say anything for or against either of these knives. This is just strictly uh, my thoughts on the use of these two knives. As well, I kind of want to lay down the rules of what I'm going to be doing, and that is that it's going to be pretty basic testing, but the first real test will be batoning. Some of you guys don't like batoning, but I do. So I'm going to be batoning, light batoning. This isn't going to be heavy duty trying to chop down a rock with, you know, these knives. This is going to be pretty light batoning, maybe like medium-ish batoning, and then feather sticking, fire starting, because I want to see how sharp the spines are on both of these. As I've mentioned before in other videos, the Mora Garberg does actually have a sharpened spine, so how well does it throw? As well, I will be using a standardized uh, ferro rod. This one does have a ferro rod on its sheath. I'm not using that. I'm actually going to be using this Mora. Uh, and I know Mora, but this is uh, the Mora Eldris ferro rod. But it's a very fair comparison, I believe. And uh, so that's going to be the standard of measure. Both knives are going to use that ferro rod. Uh, so they're going to try and create, or I'm going to try and create a feather stick with both of these knives. Uh, or first, I'm going to baton, feather stick, and then use a little bit of uh, accelerant just to see how well they throw sparks. And then I'm going to try to do a uh, tri stick, or at least a, at least a few notches with the tri stick. So that is essentially the testing. Uh, of these knives and I just want to yeah, I'm sorry that this is getting a little lengthy here uh, with the whole explanation but I just want to kind of explain what this series is going to be about and how am I going to test We have these a knives. really nice piece of dried spruce. This stuff should be extremely flammable and in this pouch here I have just a little bit of aspen, uh, the inner bark pulled to pieces and this will be the accelerant for the ferro rod. I'm not going to do a big fire here. This is simply a small fire to see see which one is easier, as far as ferro rods go, which one is easier to light or which one lights off uh, from the ferro rod. The this first one, I'm sorry you can't see the very beginning of this, but this one, in fairness, I'm not lying, is the uh, Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. It will be the first one to be batoned with. Now this is a triangularly split piece of bark, or uh, spruce so it's not going to be exactly equal but it's going to be pretty comfortable. And so you guys can see there, of course, the Bushcrafter is a great knife. So it split that very easily uh, with minimal damage to this piece of uh, wood here as the baton. Uh, but very easily did it. Now to make a feather stick.
Now, if you guys will notice as well, I am adding the additional challenge of doing this all with mittens. So these knives do have an extra possibility of a bonus for if these knives, especially the Garberg, you know, are better prepared for cold climates, you know, they may actually perform better. And so with this Bushcrafter, I think it has a pretty big handle, but um, certainly it, it is running into some problems. You can see that really the, about the first, you know, one eighth of the blade is covered with this mitten. So that is a disadvantage of the Bushcrafter. So not my best feather sticking, uh, but good enough. And now on to the Garberg. So like I said, you will not be able to see the top of this, but I do promise it's as equal as possible. Uh, as you can see, they're very comparable actually, and I'm not overly surprised because these are both uh, Scandinavian grinds at the core of it. So these do perform very, very well when splitting. So once again, I'm already noticing as well the advantages of this handle and how it's set up for the cold uh, weather, and in particular using mittens, so I am really liking that. I also do want to apologize too for any uh, noise that you guys hear, that does suck. <laughs> Any uh, mitt noise you guys hear that does kind of suck and I'm sorry about all the whiteness. Uh, it is currently snowing so uh, it's just very bright out. But anyways, very nice feather sticks. Uh, if not a little bit better than the uh, Bark River Knives Bushcrafter but very comparable so far other than the whole fact that with this one there's a lot more palm filling I think and this is what really helps with these mittens if you guys notice here this is what this looks like uh, with the Garberg and this is what this looks like with the uh, Bark River Knives Bushcrafter you can see I can do pretty well with both uh, with not having too much mitten conflict but like I was saying what I really dislike about the Bushcrafter is it has a very thin as you guys see there on the front end is very thin and when you're wearing a very thick glove or mitten like I am these are very thick mittens uh, you'll have a lot of problems when you have very thin parts of knives because you really need a very filled hand to really soak up that entire mitten. All the tests so, and the standard of this test, uh, I will be doing the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter first. And of course, this is its respective uh, feather stick here. So it's what it made and it's what it will have to use to start this fire. I'm not going to do any cheap shots here. So in fairness, I do have to actually scratch this material off. And there we go. Oh, so close. It is quite cold out here, guys. So uh, flames don't tend to want to light off as easily. Man, this is not wanting to go. <laughs> and there we go. Almost. Okay, there we go. So you can see there are a little bit of flames. I'm just gonna let this kind of take off. In fairness, you know, if you really wanted to, you could uh, light it up. But in And there you guys go. <laughs> this is a lot longer than I was expecting. And really, in all honesty, uh, that was quite an underwhelming performance from the Bushcrafter. I'm not gonna lie, that was uh, not its best performance. 
short fire that was like i said and i'm going to show all of that to just be fair that was an extremely underwhelming performance by the bushcrafter in all honesty i was really hoping for a lot better than that um, in fairness some of that i'm not gonna lie was me uh, not being as prepared as i should have been i just should have gone for my glove first and uh yeah, so a little bit of that was definitely by me, but in fairness, the ferro rod, uh, or the back of this knife, was not as sharp as uh, I was expecting it to be, especially, especially in comparison to this bush, or this uh, Garberg. So now on to the Garberg, and I can already tell you guys, having used this Garberg spine, uh, this is probably going to be like a one strike, you know? maybe two. So there we go already so much better once again guys i just want to tell you that i'm not trying to make the uh, bushcrafter look bad as i've said in many videos it is really one of my favorite knives but in all honesty i think the real problem with the bushcrafter is that while the spine is squared or pretty square the, uh, bark river they didn't go to any extra steps to actually sharpen that spine whereas with this knife and some lt right knives you'll see the fact of the matter is that they actually went through the trouble of actually sharpening this spine so you can see i'll just do one straight strike here like you can already see here just how better that is in comparison to the bush crafter so i'll just roll in here You can see that the the spine on this bark river it catches most of the time but it does not want to catch every single time so that is where i think the the uh, garberg really beats the bushcraft or is in fire starting and that in all honesty is actually really surprising i am actually quite sad that the bushcrafter did not perform that well i was really expecting it to do better than that now, despite those uh, disappointing results, now on to uh, tri sticks. And this is a spot where I'm not sure which one's really going to be better, in all fairness, but uh, they're both going to do or should do pretty well. Uh, so I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to show uh, because there's a lot to it and it can get really long and boring, but it's really going to show something.
you guys can see there, hopefully. So you guys can see there, hopefully, that. So you guys can see, there's a quick three. It is quite cold today. So I'm not going to do a whole lot because I also have to do the same exact things with the Garber. That was semi-easy. I also have to keep in mind, this is a birch here. So birch is naturally a harder wood to work with. So now onto the second piece with the Garber. Now I do think the Garber will slightly outperform just for the fact, at least in my hands, uh, that was a Scandivex on the Bark, Never, Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, and this is just straight Scandi. And Scandies tend to be the absolute best thing against wood. Sorry about that Eldris getting in the way. So guys, there you go. Once again, pretty short because it is quite cold out here and I don't want to uh, spend up a whole lot of your time or my time sitting in one place carving these notches because you actually get pretty cold just uh, sitting and carving notches in one place. But anyways, I want to uh, summarize this comparison of the Garber versus the Bushcrafter. And actually pretty shockingly, especially with this test went pretty shockingly actually in my opinion, failing to perform well with Firecraft. Uh, as far as making notches goes with the Mora, it worked just fine in my opinion. I really didn't notice anything you know, overly better than this or overly worse than this. Uh, it was pretty much, I'd say, probably just slightly better because this is a true Scandi and so it likes to truly bite into wood unlike a convex. Whereas if you have any sort of convex, it won't like to bite into wood as much. So anyways, uh, you know, that was 
pretty comparable there. Um, a firecraft, like I said, is really the biggest place where I was expecting this bushcrafter to perform a lot, a lot better than it actually did. And of course, some of it may be my fault, but really, in fairness, it is the spine. As I was using both of these knives directly in comparison, there was no doubting that this spine here actually dug into the ferro rod a lot better. As far as batoning goes, once again, I'd say they were actually pretty comparable. Uh, you know, I didn't really find any difference in either of them. They are both similar in size and weight and overall, you know, grinds and everything. So there's really no reason why, you know, one of these should perform better and uh, pretty true that. So it, anyways, guys, very interesting. I really am liking this series because you guys really get to see the truth behind, you know, just how much, you know, worse or better, you know, this knife is or how much better really is this knife over here, you know. Uh, you'll get to see just, you know, the real the real life comparisons between a more Garberg and a whole bunch of different knives, you know. And so that's what I'm really hoping to do is show the honest truth with just how good this knife actually is. And really, I hope I can show you guys why I really love this knife. You know, why, uh, you know, this knife, like I was saying, when I first held it, I knew it was going to be like an instant winner because... You know, this is some of the reasons why I knew that. So, <clears throat> anyways, guys, that is it for now on this Mora versus the World Part 1. Hopefully you guys like this series. Don't forget to comment if you want to see more of this series. Uh, I really want to make more of it, but obviously if you guys don't want to see this series at all, I'll stop. But, <clears throat> anyways, guys, don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and tell me what your thoughts are on this series, and I'm out.